What's up, the world? I'm here in the studio where, as you can see, I am packing up our life into boxes. We're moving on to whatever's next for the Reeves family. We're not entirely sure what that is. And there's a global pandemic, so we figure we probably should figure that out. In this video, I wanna talk you through some questions that I've seen come through the internet on this bag, which I'm so excited that this is finally out there, even in the midst of a global pandemic, even in the midst of a global economic crisis. <laughs> Small businesses can still uh, create travel bags uh, that for products <laughs> that we might, we might not get to use for a while. So I wanna answer any questions that I've seen on this bag. That's what we'll be doing for most of this video, but then also maybe a little life update, I don't know. Most of the videos I've made over the last few weeks have just taken so much work. So this one I'm just like setting up and just we're gonna let it roll. All right, first huge thing on the travel bag is there was a miscommunication. So the first batch of bags are not gonna have YKK zips. Here's why I'm not worried about this. Some of you might wanna cancel your order. I don't know. The thing is this. YKK are a like a, a, a known brand to some of us consumers. It's like shorthand for quality, right? But they're not the only zipper game in town that's quality. In fact, I could sit here and talk to you about a lot of other bag companies that use things that aren't YKK zippers because YKK zippers have a notoriously long lead time and all sorts of other little hassles that can happen when you're actually bringing a bag to market. So suffice it to say, these zips were supposed to be YKK. The exterior zips were supposed to. The ones on the inside still are. It's just the outside ones, we had a miscommunication with our factory. So here's the deal, what does that change? I don't think it changes anything. I don't think you're gonna break these zippers, number one. Number two, if you ever do, there's a lifetime warranty on this bag. Did you know that? Lifetime warranty, satisfaction guaranteed. I liked these pack. I like these packed people. My take on these zips is you're not gonna have any issues with that, so, you know. But what do I know? What do I know? I'm the guy who, I, like, you You don't trust me. I helped make this bag, right? But I do want to apologize because it even made it into the the song. <laughs> it made it into the damn song. <laughs> Which I, did you like that song, by the way? So I just want to be clear on this. We didn't know that. Nobody at Pact even really knew that. It wasn't until it came out later that it was like, oh, shit, man, the first batch isn't going to have the YKK zips on there. Personally, I, I mean, I, I just, who knows if there'll ever be another travel backpack sold again in the world. So <laughs> get them while the getting's good in one hand. But on the second hand, this this thing is is like, this thing is a legit travel bag. I, I know that a lot of people I saw, especially at the Pack Hacker review, the comments were like, they were unimpressed with the looks or the, I mean, I think the looks are, I think the looks are fine. I think what's so interesting about this thing is the way that it performs, right? The fact that you have these two sides to this bag. This is what enables all of the organization on this thing, okay? You have two sides. So some people really dislike this, having two buckets. I totally understand that. Peak designs. By the way, one of the things that's come up quite a bit is like 4.5 pounds on this, which is like here in North America, the weight stuff doesn't end up mattering all that much, honestly, on a lot of the planes. It probably will in the future, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. The truth is this is 4.5 pounds. So is this. So is the like the other like best travel bag in the world, the Peak Designs travel bag. I'm bringing this out because this is one big bucket. Some of you just love the one bucket. I oftentimes love the one bucket, right? This is this is like a great bag for the one bucket. And I don't want to dis discount anybody who's like like, listen, if you're a one bucket person, go for it. That's like a big deal. It's an easier way to pack to a lot of people. For me, I don't mind this this down the middle thing at all. It helps me basically I get all my clothes on one side and all my tech or other items on another side, right? There was some talk about the compression straps. Are they compression straps? They're not compression straps, they're accessory straps. I mean, I basically started out my video with them just because I wanted to get it out of, out of the way that we have these accessory straps that you can clip on, but I don't really, I probably won't use them very much. What's cool about them is they have the, uh, is they have the clips in the middle. So when you're done, when you like want to get your yoga mat off there or whatever, you've got the clip in the middle that un unclips that, tripod, stuff like that. 
that that's what these things are for. That's what those, they're like accessory straps, not compression straps. I saw a lot of people commenting, I think they may, maybe didn't know that it wasn't a daily carry bag. They're like, damn, that's a really big daily carry bag. No, this is a travel bag. This is for bringing all your shit on your back like you are a pack mule and you're going to some place in the world to see what happens. That's how I met my wife. Let's talk about the laptop compartment. Laptop compartment is here in the middle and some people have been uh, like, like haven't really figured out that you can, you like I show you in my video, quick access to the top of this. I saw one commenter going like, why I thought the chase is into bags that you can quickly access your laptop when you're on the go. And that's, that's very much is what you do with this thing. When I travel, like uh, going through security and stuff, I would leave this unzipped, and then I it was it was like quicker than getting into those bags. That you have to zip all like you wouldn't want to have to zip all the way around on this thing to get into your laptop, right? Which is like what happens when you are on some of those backpacks that have the laptop compartment here up against the back or something. But the question about this question was about how big of an a laptop can you fit? And the truth is you can fit some 17 inch laptops. The new MacBook Pro 16 inch, we've confirmed does fit. My 15 inch fits easily. I brought it out just, just to show you. And then there's, like I said in the video, there's quite a bit of space, but not so much that it's jiggly. And I did hear some people saying, I don't like that the laptop is in the middle because that means I won't be able to like really compress and throw my stuff like, like you know, overpack. I won't be able to overpack my bag is basically, I think that person really actually used that word, which I totally get. That's totally understandable. I like, I like it in the middle. I think it's, I think it's interesting. I like that it's protected on both sides. You do have to think about where you're putting your, where you're putting what, for example, because this brings up another thing that, um, that I got some questions on camera cubes. What about the camera stuff? Now, I have not found yet. If you know of a camera cube that's thin enough to fit inside of here, we're talking about three inches maybe, maybe two and a half. I would say three inches and we could, that's a three inch width. So I don't know if I'm gonna find any camera cubes that fit that, but here's what I have done. Here's this main compartment. Here's my peak packing cube, right? Just like so. This is a little over three inches. This becomes the bottom of this side of the bag. This space right here on top of my packing cube, that's where I would just, I put my Canon EOS R, right? When I'm, when I'm, it's got a 15 to 35 lens on it. So it's long, big lens, it's like heavy. And then I pull off my Rode Smart Mic and I put both of those right here, which means I access them right through the top. Now, if I was like, if I was going to shoot weddings or something, I would have like a full big, like huge kit of, of stuff. So this is not your like travel professionally with a camera bag. This is your, oh shit, I want to bring my camera. Ah, we could probably find a way to do it. That's, I traveled with this, with that. I'm always traveling with my camera. So you camera people, that's that's the best way that I that I found for that personally. And because there's a rigid frame in the back, that actually provides a surprising amount of of little padding or protection rather. It's a rigid protection back there. So it actually creates the volume of the space to be pretty usable. And because that zipper is right here on the top you're in and out relatively quick. So some of you might find a really killer camera setup with this, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that like it's gonna be the best camera bag you ever used. Though I do think with the right accessories and depending on the gear that you're using, you might find something you really love to use in this. Let's see, other things that I've heard, people may be questioning uh, if it's big enough, can I fit enough stuff in it? My take on this is that like there is, Again, this is like the big inside of this bag, of the packed duffel bag as well. It's, it's two sides, right? It's having two sides, like a suitcase. It's, ha it's being, you know, how am I gonna organize these things? It's having two sides that you can fill up. Now, they're each about three inches wide, maybe a little shy of three inches wide. This is that pocket on the front of the bag that is uh, that has some nice big dimension. It has that waterproof lining. I heard people like, 
I heard someone complaining that this is really crinkly in here and it's it's not. It's really not that, I mean, you get a little crinkle. You do get a little crinkle, but it's not loud at all. It's not like a a sound to it. Like like the thing that, the thing about the waterproof pocket was this was kind of like, we just heard it from the audience. We heard it from the people who were filling out our forums, uh, the PAX audience specifically. And I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Like, hey, fine, it, it'll have that use and it's waterproofish, so it won't, nothing will spill out into the bag. But for me, this was always the place to have that. Basically, it's the large quick access pocket. It's great visibility on the top of the bag and I can get in and see all my stuff. And this is where I probably have either, like you saw in the video, the big sort of tech pouch or just a bunch of loose little pouches, like one pouch for my battery and cables, one, just my AirPods floating around freely in there. Maybe my phone, stuff like that, just right in here. This is, this is my purse. And that pocket does eat into the space here. So the way I look at it this way is I try not to be anywhere near this thing and just fill up this, which is perfect size for the packing cube right there. You see that? It fits perfect with enough room for the, am I, am I, can you see that? <laughs> I'm just like holding things up. Can you see that? Okay, so space on this thing is you've got a packing cube here, and then you've got that packing cube right here, plus another packing cube right here. Then you have all the external access, right? So the pocket on the front, the admin pocket, the, the, the large quick access waterproof pocket that I was showing you, and the water bottle pocket. Now those all have a little bit of their own independent capacity. So they're not necessarily cutting into the bag, but this is a, one of the things I love about this is this isn't too fancy of a bag where if you wanna use it a different way, it won't be able to accommodate that. I, I just love that we're, everything here is made out of soft goods materials. This is a bag. This is not a rocket pack. This is not a, you know, a thesis about human carry modes or something like that. This is like a, you have a certain amount of shit you need to get from point A to point B. It needs to be care, it needs to be like carried, right? Specifically hands-free on our backs, right? It needs to fit into those damn airline luggage things where if you get stopped and like it doesn't fit, like they they screw you over in some way or another, right? You need to have all your external access. So everything that you need to get to, for me when I travel, I could be spending a long time in travel. I could be spending multiple days in travel. So on that journey, I need to be able to get my headphones, my snacks, my water, my iPad, potentially my camera, anything Thing that I might be needing to just keep myself occupied or to do the work that I need to do, like my laptop and stuff like that. I just need to be getting that. And we designed this so that all of those getting to that stuff was like actually easily doable from the outside of the bag. Depending on if you have the camera, and like I said, setting up the camera or whatever other tech you might need in that back compartment so that you can access it from the top. I did see some questions about the hip strap, which to me is is like a great, like a cute little add-on basically. This was a thing we developed late in the process. Not that late in the process. It was just like, once you see this idea, it's sort of like, huh, how do we... <laughs> How do we not how do we not make that? And how do we make that without adding another hundred dollars to the price of this bag? That's that's really what my concern was. It's, it was already to get this thing delivered to you with so that you can actually use it and go on trips whenever that starts happening again was already costing enough. Oh, I knew it. I was I knew it watching the whole time. I know that if I could get this bag at like 175, I'm like this is this kill this crushes. This does such a good job. It, it gets so many people out there traveling for 175, but I knew it was going to be it was going to be closer to the 250, 300, 350. I I don't know what it'll end up. That's for pack to, to figure out, honestly. I wanted to get a great built bag that was designed well that like was the packed stuff like I think the logo and the way that it looks and the material feel like I saw some people talking about how the the, the material doesn't feel very Chase Reeves and I actually really respect that I love that there's people I mean over on the pack hacker 
video there was like shout out to tom thanks for thanks for mentioning the video on your channel and and got the conversation going of a bunch of people you know going like I don't, is this a chase reeves bag is this a really and i had to i had to answer in there around like listen this is a packed bag Pact was making a, a travel backpack and they were like, we'd love to work with you. And I'm like, I want to be a part of building the Pact travel backpack. This is not the Chase Reeves travel backpack. This is the Pact with Chase Reeves travel backpack, right? If I was building my own travel backpack, what would I, what would I do? I'd be like, well, I want one like this. I want one like this with a little bit of update straps maybe but you probably don't need them if you're very athletic. I want the goddamn Heim Planet uh, monolith, 40 liter. It's like, I, I my my travel bag needs were, were have, are like soundly met. And there's, there's never like a, which one's the best one. It's always like, how do you travel? How do you travel, right? So this, what I know, and now that I've, talked with so many people who are travelers now that I've worked with so many bag companies and messed with so many bags myself is this is going to be a satisfying bag for a lot of the ways that a lot of people travel. So what I love, what I've been saying in the comments is like, this is not the perfect bag for everybody, but there's a lot of people out there who just, who are, who are like, oh shit, that's the fucking one. And I gotta address the fact that it feels so strange to be talking about buying a travel bag right now. It's literally, it's so hilarious. It's actually, it's like, it's like so funny. It feels like you're in, it feels like it's that fucked up time of a mushroom trip. Where you're just like, oh wait, is that funny or is that sad? But there's something very poetic in it. You know, the way that life goes is you just you just kind of get what you get, right? The biggest advice I can possibly give to people is like you're gonna just get what you get, and you're gonna have to play the game with the cards that have been dealt to you. That's just everybody starts there. You know what? The biggest privilege in the world is having a parent that like encourages you and believes in you and is and kind of wants you around. To have a parent that kind of wants you around, that is a massive privilege, a huge upgrade in life, let alone being, you know, white and male and heterosexual, all the other things I got going for me, right? But for all of us, no matter what our race, religion, or creed, no matter where we fall along, you know, binary, gendered, encoded cultural norms, right? No matter what we find is our, our, our sort of like ready to go with identity that we feel comfortable identifying as, or whether or not we feel understood or accepted by other people, People out there on the world. One thing's for sure, we're all on this goddamn planet. There's not another fucking human off this planet except for the few on the space station, right? Who are who are probably who are probably watching eating popcorn just going like fuck man. Do you think we have people on the space station at all times just in case something happens to the planet? But we are all on this planet. And we all come out from this planet. Like, like Alan Watts said, an apple tree apples, the earth peoples. And then my son's like, actually the earth trees. There are so many different kinds of travel bags out there right now. It's an embarrassment of riches in a lot of ways. It makes you wonder like, <laughs> like are we gonna get to go back to there? And I, I, hope we, I hope we do because we are soundly on this planet. We're, not, we're, we're all quarantined on planet earth right now. The cost of getting humans off planet is just so high. So let me show you this hip strap. This was the thing that I was like, oh, we could develop this more, but it would just end up costing, I didn't want to add too much cost and I didn't want to add too much weight and materials because basically I heard someone else comment, uh, saw someone else comment like about the, like the price, wondering why it's the, it's made in Vietnam. Why is it still cost this much? Well, because there's lots of sewing and there's lots of stuff that like to get the features that we wanted and to have the design, the interactions that we wanted where there's, it's not in the way. Right? I can get you a very simple set of features on a very simple and affordable bag, but the 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 use of it can feel cumbersome over time. In design, we call it cognitive load, right? The job of a designer is to make the intended 
I, a thing happen with as little energy as possible is one way of looking at it, right? And so that's why we would spend more time and energy sewing things certain ways so that the use of that pocket, the use of that thing over time ends up, ends up being as cumbersome less as possible. What do you think of that? This hip strap's pretty great. This is this is actually like like this thing that we just started experimenting with and over time it just ended up feeling like like a favorite thing to everyone I showed it to. Like when I show it to people people go, "Oh, oh fuck, that is sick." It's got these little buttons in the back that are are give you the little bit of expansion and contraction capabilities. So when it's in the bag like this, it's just folded away. But we wanted to add a little more space. We just we just didn't think that was enough space for most people for most like actual journeys when you're a weekend away in Barcelona. <laughs> When's that gonna happen again? When you're out in Tulum or uh, or maybe, you know, you're out on the, you're, you're like coming off the trail in Peru and you're in one of the little towns or something like that. You can easily have just your, just a couple quick essentials, maybe a little snack, maybe any necessary documents right here in this guy. And then what we, what we have is so two things. Little pa little pouch here with a zipper and then a little divider that has magnets. How do they work? This is great. It's just another little piece of, of security. It's up really high, so the zipper actually comes right close to that. So if you want to get back there, you just slip your fingers back there and go. It's not gonna, the magnets mean that's whatever's back there isn't gonna spill out into this container. So you actually get a nice little divider in there. So you might have tiny, uh, tiny little, like post-it note size. Papers. Business papers, man. Then there's these flaps, okay? So these are the hip straps on the bag, all right? And you can wear it out like this. You could wear it like a hip strap or whatever, or you can pull these through here and fold this thing back. Now we designed this little thing. This is just super simple. If you wanted to go more minimal, this is just a simple fold away kind of job. Cause I think this looks a little bit better with just the minimal strap right there, right? I kind of like that, I, I personally. And I wanted to give people that option for that just so that when you do go into like walking around the street mode, it's, it's minimal, it's thin, it almost has a purse kind of vibe, but it, but you could get away with unisex this thing. You could, you could like, you know, you're going to get a coffee at Blue Bottle in Brooklyn. You're not so out of place. I, I end up, for the most part, not using this when I travel, and I just hide this away here. So I never have to worry about it, but then if I forget that it's there, because I like that it gives me a little bit of lumbar support, and unless I've got it really packed out. If I'm traveling with my family, and we're going through customs or something like that, I'll put the hip straps on. I will, I'll get those hip straps on. But for the most part, I've traveled with it just like that, and I've pulled that out in like certain little moments where you're like, oh, actually, I've got that little pouch, I'll use that. Now, this hip strap is not adjustable where it is. By the way, this is the luggage pass-through. Did you see that that's where that is? Which is nice, it's not so wide that everything gets floppy in there, you do, you might have to, you know, check and see if your handle's too wide for this. And if some handles go like all the way across, you're not gonna get that. But a lot of them are gonna be right in that sweet spot for this thing. It's just gonna feel so good on there. But this hip strap, where it is on you, for me, it's just right above my hips. Now I can loosen this. I can loosen this strap and then that will come down further. That's how you end up adjusting that, but the truth is these straps, they'll want to be on a specific part of you. You know, they'll want to be sort of right in, you'll feel it, you'll feel where, because it, they're, they're great. Feels shitty, put on a travel bag right now. Makes me want to go, <laughs> makes me want to get out of here. Especially since I'm like packing everything up and like my whole life is, <laughs> My whole life is just like a, like, it's like those to-do lists that is just like, there's so much more 
that needs to be done than can be done in any day. Okay, I've got some questions here from some YouTube comments. Let's go through them. One of them is, Jojo asked, do the front pockets cut into the main compartment space? And I would say this, these two do not, though what you have in there can make, as for, like for instance, if you're really tight and overpacked in this compartment, that can be tighter to get into these. It's just gonna happen. Same thing with this. This has its own space like we saw on the inside of the bag, but if you push up into that, you can get more space behind it, have less space up here, and you can kind of customize that how you see fit. Jody is asking what torso lengths does it work for? And I, I like, this is, this. we didn't make this adjustable, like have like a full rig. So it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be for most people, but not all people. Right, because you know you got to make it. You got to make a decision. So if you're very short, or if you're very tall, or if your torso's very short, or your torso is very tall, it may not may not fit very well. You know, but uh, but you might be surprised. I think this backpack has such a comfortable harness system. I might be, I might be like just because I've spent so much time with this thing, and we've worked so hard to get it all working the way we want it to work. But like, I'm very pleased with, without having to add a bunch of technology or craziness, it ends up just being the right density of foam, the right like sort of size of this stuff. The other thing I didn't show you is that these straps on this, these are these new straps from Duraflex, which are super durable. Apparently they're just insanely durable, but it gives you the ability to take the strap off without having a bunch of clip and dangle over here. So you just have a little clip that uh, that now comes out like this. And in all my testing of this, it's never popped out on its own. It clips right in. Someone asked, why not go for a TSA friendly laptop compartment? I don't wanna have to do the thing where I open the bag up or I pull the whole thing down and whatever's in the bag starts spilling out. I just am gonna grab my laptop from the top and put it in the bin. They always ask me to remove my laptop. Unless I'm TSA approved, which I am now on most flights, in which case you could just walk right through, I guess. LeVar Burger asks, as a shorter person, 5'7", is this thing gonna be like clopping on the back of my thighs as I'm walking? At 5'7", no. At 5'7", no, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a little bit in the, in the shorter spot on this, maybe, but it, you know, everybody's torso's different. I don't know, you're gonna have to put it on your body, right? But no, it's not gonna be, at 5'7", it's not gonna be clopping down on you like that. I think you'd have to be like four foot, like my, <laughs> my 10 year old's not, that's not even doing that on my 10 year old. A lot of people asking about the new MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop. Yes, that fits. Some people notice these, uh, these straps here on the load adjuster and whether or not there's a, like a space to like put them or are they just floppy. To be honest, this is a prototype. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly what, what we're gonna do with those. I can't remember. <laughs> There were so many details, so many details. And some people really didn't like these, these like this little accent right here. I feel like it gives it a little bit of a, um, a little bit of that like, you know what I, I really love? My grandpa had a 1972 Porsche 911. He was like the second owner of this thing. The first owner had it for about a month. And my grandpa like had it for his whole life long. And there's something about that era, those older school Porsches that I really love. And he was a fighter pilot or at least he was for a little bit. And I only know this because he had like a fighter pilot's helmet from, I guess it must've been the Korean War. And there's just something about this green and black and the metallic on here that just, for some reason to me, it has a little bit of that utilitarian, almost fighter pilot vibe. That's just, that's just, it puts me in that ballpark. But I, I, I can hear you when you're saying some of you don't like this thing, but the truth is this is a, uh, this, we looked at a lot of different clips for this or strap, you know, dangle jabby things for them, you know, adjusters. And these metal ones just ended up being the thing that we went with. We looked at like black metal. We looked at a lot of different things, but maybe putting our own like packed, like embossed, engraved, laser cut logo in there or something like that, which maybe we'll do in the future. 
But uh, but I like these things. I think they're sweet. And I can understand why some people are like, ah, oh, it looks funky. Tim's asking if I will be doing a daily carry with Pact, possibly in the future. Who knows? This is everything was geared up to this. And obviously now that <laughs> now that the global moment is upon us, who know who knows what tomorrow holds, right? I like this question from Chris, who's asking, do you think this bag could be used to walk the Camino? if you only filled it to 15 pounds. Yeah, I mean, if you only filled this to 15 pounds, you could totally comfortably walk the Camino, I think. But I would personally wanna go with something more hiking oriented, just because you're doing so much movement. And this is designed, really, to get you in a very dignified way to where you're going for very modern life kinds of things. But that being said, it's still gonna be super comfortable for you to get like through your stuff. I don't know. I, I think it could be a really great bag for the Camino. Who knows? But I would probably go, you know what I would go with is that Patagonia Nine Trails bag. That is like the most comfortable sort of hiking outdoorsy bag that I've ever worn. I just can't believe this thing's out, man. I think that's all the questions that I have. Right, I'm just looking at it. We're almost one, two, three, four percent funded. So 1,234%, over a thousand percent funded. I can't, believe that that's so awesome i know some of you were stoked just to support just to support me that means so much that like this just means the world to me i'm i'm so grateful for so many of you and some of you are just wanting a great travel bag and are looking forward to what it's going to be like when we get back to uh you know a global a working a global working <laughs> economy not that not that our co global economy was ever working that bad i mean i was always like complaining about like yeah it's like the fucking you know what I mean? It's just like fucking power people, right? It's just, they got like power and then there's, you know, there's, anyways, poor people, like, you just like, fuck man, this thing's just crazy. Like, no, everything's fucking broken. But now everything's really fucking broken. <laughs> How are you doing, by the way? How are you? Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you like so many people, um, you don't have uh, your income source got... <coughs> coronavirus in some way. The whole world, human nature just went whoosh, right back into itself. Just zoop. It's almost like you, you see those like, like sea anemones or those like coral like things like this is the way that this is the way that entities like explore their environment. Have you seen heard of this? Uh, Paul Stamets talked about this. If you take the subway map of, of Tokyo, you put an oat of nutrition source on every main hub. Right? I think it was the Tokyo. It might have been all of Japan, but I think, you know, Tokyo. You put a, a little resource, a little piece of nutrition on everything, and then you put this bacteria in there and see what happens. And what it does at first is it kind of reaches out in a, a little bit of a chaotic, but it can only reach so far, right? But it goes like this, and once it finds something, everything regroups. And it goes, all right, we know this thing. Like, we know about this thing. And then reaching out again, spanning out again, it finds the other places. And it like uh, organized the subway system of Tokyo in a more efficient way than subway system designers. This is the beauty of life, of biology. How does it work? It's also kind of the beauty of a virus. I mean, it's crazy to think of the virus has an identity and it has a hunger. It has a will. This virus has an identity that's bigger than any individual host that it's inhabiting right? But it also has a will. Like you can be like, you can, you can track how Corona's doing. You can like, how is Corona? From Corona's perspective, it wants to survive. It wants to thrive. I mean, look around the world. The world has always been a place of competing wills, competing interests, but competing wills. The magician uses a will. The magician uses not just the elements that are around and what's what's here, but the magician also brings like a desire, like a will, a, 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 I am going to do thisness, right? Willpower, that's what I mean when I'm saying will, a will to do things, like I will do it. Will is a very strange concept. It's very like, you can't quite put your finger on it, but we all have an experience with it. Have you ever met a child who was willful? That sea anemone that we were just whoosh, sucked everything back in. It's like, oh, danger, death from above. Watch out. Was that a, was that a, was that a hawk? <laughs> Are we in a tide pool? Are we vulnerable? It's fascinating to see that we can pull in like that. And we can all like the word we're using is hunker down, right? Everybody wants to hunker down and survive this thing. But 
there's going to be some people it hits extremely hard who are already being hit hard. And as we get closer to the, you know, to when rents do or whatever, all that shit, man, it, it's it, who knows what's going to happen. Who knows? So I hope you're well. How are you? You okay? We are planning. We are moving. We are moving right now. So we got that going for us. We've been in San Diego for a really long time. For us, it was just going to be a stop off to try things out. We wanted to live with another family. We were able to do that for a short amount of time before they had to leave. So we were like, we were like left with this big old house and this big old rent payment and uh, an amazing group of people. Oh, just so sad to make community and then leave because there's just not a lot in San Diego for us. I'm not a I'm not a big city kind of guy, especially a city like San Diego where it's like a big city, but it's like, isn't it great that, that we have a Best Buy? Isn't it great that the Olive Garden's open? Oh, we don't go to the Olive Garden. We're cooler than that. And then you go to some other big restaurant that probably does have a good chef there, but the build out is so big, you might as well be in like a rainforest cafe or something like that. They're making rainforest cafes in San Diego for people who used to work in finance. <laughs> Living in Portland for 15 years, I felt like I, I feel like I lived in the future. I really did. The future looks like this, you guys. Renegade chefs escaping New York and San Diego and San Francisco and Boston and wherever and getting to have a place someplace. Like one of the things that's interesting about this correction is everything gets cheaper. If you're an entrepreneur, like you can hire employees now or have someone work as a contractor for you, that's gonna be cheaper than it was. And those people are gonna be more eager to work for you. Why? Because it's like, what else are we gonna do? Which by the way, reminds me of this podcast, Scott Galloway, the Professor G Show. This guy was fascinating. I didn't know anything about him. He interviews Jonathan Haidt on the second episode of this. The trailer for it was really funny. He's a professor and, and he has this like YouTube video I'll link to below about, hey, there's a book out that he has on like the, the you know, I don't know, something about the, the algebra of happiness. Fascinating, I liked his dialogue. I liked the level of his dialogue. And then like, and then the damn thing, I should have just, I, the best thing I found, there's a couple things. I'm normally on Twitter, I'm, I'm making note of like the best things that I've read today on the coronavirus. And you can go through and kind of find those. But like the Joe Rogan episode with the guy, Michael Osterholm, episode 1439. That was the thing, I again, I tweeted that out as well. I was like, oh. I should have listened to that the moment it came out. I was I was like a week or two behind on that. That's where so much of the of the good info was. I find it cuz I'm a householder, right? I'm a daddy. I've got kids and we're raising kids through this, right? We're teaching kids through this. And I'm a husband and uh, and an entrepreneur, right? We've got businesses and we've got like, you know, interests in in terms of being able to pay for food for our family and shit like that. But also we're raising humans. It's like, I wanna put good food into my kids because I know that their body's gonna make itself out of the food that I give them. Well, similarly, I know that the mindset and the ideas and the experiences that we have during this time, the kids are literally making themselves out of what's going on. And this kind of traumatic uh, experience, it really is, it's a trauma. It's like a trauma to the system. It's a trauma to most of us to individuate and realize the systems that two weeks ago we had tons of trust in um, never really had our, you know, our safety in mind. Like they, they tried to have our safety in mind, but they're incompetent, right? There's an incompetency because uh, to, to solve the problem in a way that means we save enough lives or we're prepared for the future or civilization can actually you know, turn into something it's been trying to turn into. I think we're trying to evolve and we don't know how much monkey is always just gonna be in us because we really are monkey. Like the way that the markets work, it's monkey. It's like, oh fuck, it's fear, right? That's all of the stock market is, is, is conjecture on trust. It's like a proxy for trust. And, and, and some things are really trusty and we really like trusting and some things uh, are, are worth trusting at least. And some things are new and hopeful. It might be like a big way to make a fast break on getting some money or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know, but I'm moving my family in the midst of it. And I'm going back to see my parents. I'm scared to go see my parents because they're older and it's like, man, and I don't want to get this virus and I don't want my 
kids get this virus, but it looks like in the future, like we're going to have had it. But I'm editing a video right now, which is a conversation I have with my friend, Don Miller. Don Miller is an entrepreneur. He was a writer for a long time. He still is a writer. He wrote a book called Blue Like Jazz, which was the subtitle was Non-Religious Thoughts on Christian Spirituality. And it was just the hippest book back in the day. I mean, it really connected with me. 20 years ago or something and he's become a friend and we were texting and I was like dude let's record something and so we had a glass of whiskey and recorded a conversation and he's he's smarter than me he, he's around people that are smart all the time um, and and his hearing his take on it was was great I'm editing that now I will be sending that out at least to the to the patreon and the YouTube members um, with maybe I'll take a clip of it and put it on the channel uh, I'm not sure but it's a long conversation, it's like an interview, and I and I like it, it's fun. I like filmed it from like multiple angles. I was like, oh yeah, I'm like a YouTube film guy. I don't know what you guys are doing. I hope you're well, I should go. I'm gonna have to edit this damn thing. It's already been long enough as it is. But hopefully that answers any of your questions on this. This thing's still on Kickstarter, so if you want to make that like, that like statement of like, fuck yeah, I'm traveling. I am gonna travel in the future and this is the bag that I'm gonna do it in. This is a good bag for that, to just be done with travel bags. The only thing I would say is like, that thing I started this whole video with, if you want just one bucket and you and you feel that strongly, don't go for this bag. If, on the other hand, you that's not a very important thing to you and you actually wouldn't mind being able to have multiple compartments to organize your gear into, you are stoked because it's comfortable, it's durable, it's got a lifetime warranty. Did I finish up the YKK thing? I feel really shitty about that because I said it in the song. You know, it's one thing if it's on the if it's on the Kickstarter page and then we send out an email, it's like, oh shit. But it's in the goddamn song. That song is iconic to me. I, I want that song to live in infamy because I want everything I make to live in infamy. But I wanted to be very clear about that for any of you who are like, I only buy bags that are YKK, man. I don't trust any of that mumbo jumbo bullshit. Give me the good stuff. It is not gonna have YKK zippers on the externals. It's just not, the first 5,000 are not going to. But you've got a lifetime warranty on this thing. Those zippers, are not gonna give you problems. These same zippers have gone through all the same YKK stress test zips at our factories, right? We've seen, we've seen the numbers. Like this is, this is the one that our factory defaults to when it's, and, and they make just probably millions of bags with this zip. What's coming up on the channel? I like, who knows? We're about to be moving. I've got like, these boxes are just bags. I wanna set up a bag palace. I want to set up a bag palace, and once like some of the some of the heaviness is lifted, I want to uh, I want to bring like people over into the bag palace, have them walk around, show me what they're carrying, what their daily carry is, and then I want to go like I want to upgrade it. I want to be like, all right, well here's a bag. What about this? Well, I don't like the whole little bit, and we get to something, and we find it, and the whole thing's video camera, like a documentary. <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. That's one thing that could be coming. We might be moving to Austin or to Tahoe, or back up to Portland, because we have a rental there that, don't you know it, is about to be vacant because the people who are renting it out own lots of restaurants. <laughs> These guys got hit so hard, so sad. And uh, and we're trying to keep them there because, I, I don't know, I like, anyway, so we might have to go to Portland. But we have options right now, and I like options. I like coming back to that nimble. Obviously, I'm not very nimble when you consider the, like all the bags and the products that I'm currently reviewing, but I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with having all that stuff because it's like a service. When my friend Jesse was over here, he was like, this is better than any bag store, like camera store or anything I've been to be before in my life. All of these bags, you never get to actually, you know, experience all these bags in person. So I wanna set that thing up. I don't mind carrying these things around because I think one of the jobs that I'm doing here is helping people find the bag that's right for them, right? But it's more than that. It's the lifestyle stuff. It's about learning to be minimal. And there's no such thing as minimal, right? There's minimal for you, right? Minimal is not a number. It's not like a certain number of things. Minimalism serves the tasks that you do with your life, the, the will of your life, right? You are minimal because you care about the success 
of these interests you have in the life. My interest in my son growing up to be a contributing member of society, figuring out how to speak with his own voice, how to love deeply and richly, how to protect himself and also be open, right? I have a vested interest in that. I am minimal in the sense that I only have what's necessary for that to come true. Same thing with my daughter. With my wife, she's an entrepreneur. She's trying things. She's working. She's like that that amoeba, like reaching out, trying, re finding the nutrition sources, right? I love having the tools like the video cameras and the webcams and the microphones or whatever for her to try shit and we spend money on like training she's like she's learning herbalism and she's she's joined like an accelerator and shit like that she spends so much money on education but she's learning stuff man it's inspiring for me i'm finding the things that i need to get to get my work done my work really is turning on that goddamn camera right there setting up a microphone of some kind and going, like having something, <laughs> having something to say, right? What do I need for that? I, I, I need a lot of stuff for that actually. So minimalism is a very complex idea for me uh, because it's not about a certain number of things. It's always about what's the will? What's the intention? Intention is another word for will there. The intention of that amoeba as it's reaching out to different, you know, nutrition sources on the Tokyo map, the intention is survival. The intention of coronavirus, of COVID-19, is to survive and to grow and to thrive. Do you know that most of these things, they, they, they peter out. They overextend themselves and they get weaker over time, just naturally. That's what one of the, the, the experts on virology, one of the things that I've heard, if you're going to believe anything, who knows? I don't know, but that Joe Rogan episode was actually quite good. What is this world that like I, I, I should have gone that, what is the world that I should have gone to Joe Rogan first? All right, y'all subscribe on Patreon. I'm grateful for all of you over there who are supporting me. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. Uh, you can also join the YouTube memberships. I don't know if anybody's joined there. I literally can't tell. All I know is that when I upload a video for Patreon, I do the same thing and upload it just for YouTube members. And then uh, I get comments over there if, if it happens. I don't know. But maybe that's easier for you to do the YouTube memberships. Um, I didn't really answer the question of what's coming. Just, just the sense that we have options feels good and that I actually have a huge box over there of products that are so sick. That this is the Bellroy Apex. Have you heard about this yet? <laughs> this thing is so fucking sick. I'm stoked about that. But I think it's, I haven't looked at the price tag yet. I'm, assu I'm assuming it's a very spendy bag because it's so sick at what it does. The materials, the welded like tape on the inside. There's, I just want to, like it's the most opulent thing in the world. It feels like being a villain reviewing that bag right now. But maybe it's exactly the content that the internet needs. I don't know. You mentioned in the comments below. But I've got a lot of video, a lot of bags that, I've, that I'm ready to like, that I, I'm just sitting on waiting to review. I've got a lot of products a lot of barefoot shoes right now that I'm like oh I finally have something to say in barefoot shoes stoked on that my dream is that every one of us on this planet is able to resource ourselves with what we need we're able to both be satisfied even if it means we're satisfied in the dissatisfaction that's just such a big when I finally came to terms with my depression it was just a realization that I'm depressed for some reason, I never saw, never saw that as a door to open. It was just like, it was always like a, uh, it was like a judgment about me, right? But, you know, seeing it as a thing that I wasn't going to change and I was just going to accept about myself was, was, was really big. And then going, being able to say to my wife, you know, if you ever want to be cured of depression, you have to say to your wife, like, I'm, when I, when I, say like I'm feeling depressive like you say back to me let's put on sweatpants and watch a bunch of Netflix that was the cure for me was just being able to tell someone about it and then to just kind of wallow in it for a little bit on the other side of wallowing in it there's boredom boredom is the great is the great place of transformation also <laughs> I mean you can go climb the mountain, you can go take the ayahuasca, you can go and, you know, but you could also just get bored enough. Get bored enough, and the good thing about going that route is, uh, is your transformation, 
it, it's you, you can't pin it on something else. It's one of the challenges with the plant medicine path is any transformation and change that you experience or that you you grok or you 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 get an insight about, you're constantly you, you can't tell if it's yours or if it's if it's the substances, right? Well, that's what happened to me when I was on this substance or where this molecule was coursing through my veins or something. Uh, when you're just bored and you're just like, I just did that because I was bored and I just did it. Like, <laughs> no, no drug owns that. All right, I'm gonna quit it there. I don't know what of this video I'm gonna edit, but I'm grateful as all get out that you're paying attention. Thanks for being a subscriber to my channel. Thanks for following along. If you have questions about things you'd like me to answer, holler in the comments. You know, I read damn near every one of them. Sometimes it's a lot to take in, but I read, I try to read a lot. No, baby. Edney, no. Can you find me? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, did you, did you make a, did you make a, 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 a accident in your, or did you spill something? Maybe spill? Yeah, it was just, it was just pee. It's just pee? Yeah. <laughs> it's just pee. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Um, say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. And then say, thanks for watching my dad's videos. Thanks for watching my dad's videos. And say, the Reeves family is on to what's next. The Reeves family is on what next. <laughs> it's on to what next, huh? Okay, say bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Dad, I'm gonna be naked. No, get out of here. Don't do naked butt here. No, stop it.